Hallelujah, glory to God. You're welcome to Prophetic Intercession with Amel. If this is the first time you're seeing me, a special welcome to you. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please kindly subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that whenever we are live, you will not miss out on what God is doing in, on this platform. And if this is not your first time, family, you know that, know that I love you. I am always praying and believing God for you that his promises over your life will manifest speedily. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord gave me this prophetic word and it came with a burden as usual. And I knew I had to relate it because it was a word in season for someone. Before I want to release this prophetic word, I would like us to pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you're about to minister to someone through this word. I pray, oh God, that may it reach the right person who needs to hear this and let there be a confirmation let it be like a confirmation to them let it resonate with them even as they listen to me in the mighty name of jesus amen hallelujah god bless you so much and thank you for always you know supporting thank you for always praying for for us thank you for for all your time of prayers and intercession i really i read um i i really do appreciate them god bless you mightily hallelujah you've been getting it wrong all this while you just got everything mixed up you got it wrong all this while you know so many people people have come to god for several reasons some people come to god because they heard about the gospel of salvation others came to god because they heard god can bless people come to god for various reasons and so because of those reasons it, it equally shapes our prayer life the best of us when we get into a place of prayer we are always praying about us we are always praying about our desires our, about our wants our, and, and our need it's always about us and us something that is related to us that is what is limiting us and that is why we cannot actually be blessed god told me today expressly i heard him clearly he said when you take care of others he will take care of you when you pray for others he will take care of you we have been called to the um, ministry of intercessors we have been called to the ministry of intercessors we are supposed to be interceding for the people around us the bible says in the book of ezekiel chapter 31 and verse 30 says let's get it ezekiel chapter 20 22 rather ezekiel 22 and verse 30 it says i search for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the gap before me for the sake of the land that i will not destroy it but i found no one not even one if god is saying this is because he expects us to be in that position he expects us to build a wall when, he, when God speaks about building a wall, a wall talks about defense. Walls talks about shield. When you hear about the wall of Jericho falling down flat, it was a mechanism of defense for the people of Jericho. So the only way they could prevent the, the Israelites from coming in was to shut the gate. They knew their wall was their fortified um, um, force of defense. So as long as the gate was closed, the walls were big enough, nobody could invade. So when God said, I, I, I searched for a man who could build the wall, it means stand in an angle uh, on the defensive angle, stand in that place where you can pray and intercede for people and his promises over their life come to pass. Oh, you know, when God says I would destroy, it's not because he really wants to destroy. It's because he wants the people to change from their ways and come to the, to the knowledge of him. When, jo when God sent Jonah to Nineveh, he said he wanted Jonah to go and preach to them and tell them to change their ways. If not, he was going to destroy them. But God's plan was not to destroy them. God's plan, and Jonah said, I know that if I go and I tell these people and they repent, you're not going to destroy them. And I'm going to appear like a false prophet. And I don't want that. So God does not really intend. The Bible says that he doesn't, he doesn't wish for anyone to die, but that they may come to the knowledge of him. So 
we as Christians, we who have seen the light, it is our responsibility to pray for others, to intercede for them, to pray warfare prayers, to believe God for their salvation, to believe God for their deliverance. We've always got to be in an angle of intercession. And the good news about this is that when you pray for people, God will take care of you. He is going to handle your own personal needs. The Bible says, yes, in the book of Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24, it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interests, it means you do not go to God because of you, you, you. Your prayer is not filled with, Father, do this for me, do that for me. It's not always about you. You must set aside selfish interests and take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatsoever comes your way. And follow me. Lay aside selfish interests. And follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living and if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. Now, for the purpose of this prophetic word, I don't want to take it the other angle that you know about dying for the gospel and all of that. I want to concentrate about setting aside selfish, selfish interest and following God. Setting aside selfish interest and following God. That is what is very important. That is what is, when you do that, God is going to take care of you. When you spend your time interceding and praying, God is going to take care of you. He is not a wicked God. If he says he sought to remind there, there, everybody that seeks God gets a reward. We have been getting it all mixed up. When the Bible says the effective and fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much, most of the time it is not about you. When you can go out of yourself and begin to pray for others, God comes down and God cannot, uh, you know, answer the prayer of the person you are praying for without visiting you. You met the prayer. God is going to handle the issues of your life before even going to answer the prayer you are praying for someone else. But why is God doing this? He just wants to, you know, create that human bridge he just wants us to be selfless in our worship he wants us to be selfless in our praise he wants us to be selfless in adoration if you can put out your own needs your own desires and seek after god then you've gotten there you've gotten there that is what god requires of us hallelujah glory to god did you receive this word with gladness it is my prayer that this should not just be another word, but that as this word comes forth, it is going to help you to be selfless in worship, to be selfless in prayers. As a matter of fact, what makes you last in the place of prayer is not when you pray about yourself. If you're just praying about yourself, you have a limited time to pray. But when you make people a subject for your prayer, you, you want to pray for others, that is what makes you stay long in the place of prayer and it strengthens your spiritual bond with God. It is my prayer that after listening to me right now, you are going to develop that desire. You're going to build that passion of an intercessor. Praying, crying to God on behalf of the people around you. Be it, them, be it your family or just acquaintances or friends. You can have that desire, that burning passion to pray and believe God for them. Hallelujah. God bless you mightily. I'm hoping to see you again in my next video. But until then, remain blessed. Shalom, shalom.